Hi, this is PD at Bergzerg Arcade at BergzergArcade.com, and this is tutorial number 112. So we're going to continue on with our little chest script for opening and closing the chest. And I'm going to go ahead and open up Unity and Mono Develop. Now we left off, we're just about to start doing our coroutines. So we have it checking to see if the state's open, you know, if, if it's closed, open the chest, else, you know, close the chest. And we see that the player can rapidly click the chest and it's the the chest door is just going to keep flipping open and close open and close and we're not going to want that behavior especially later on uh, when we have the chest trying to generate uh, loot so let's go ahead and just add a coroutine and force them to wait until the animation's done or at least a specific amount of time for now that time is just going to be the, the length of our animation uh, if you don't have an animation you can define some sort of uh, uh, variable up here to how long you want it to be. I'd say probably around two seconds is good. It's hard to judge without an animation because two seconds could be a long time uh, without an animation. But let's just go ahead and start our coroutines. So I'm going to change this around a bit. I'm going to switch it to a, well, a switch case block. And we'll be switching on state. And I'm going to comment out the old code. And we'll just put our cases in. So case will be state dot open. We'll want to break. Well, we're going to call open, but not that way. Well, we'll just wait. We'll build a structure first. We we'll want a case state dot close. And I'm going to add the default. Well, no, because we don't really need the default. If they're in between. We just don't want to do anything. So here's where we're going to call our coroutine. So we're going to use start coroutine. And then the coroutine we want to call, which in this case is open. And likewise down here for close. We're going to start a coroutine. The coroutine we want to call, which is close. And that's it for the coroutine part. But before we call the coroutine, let's go ahead and change that state. So we're going to say that our state is now equal to chest state dot in between. So by doing this, the next time if they like click really quick, uh, the next time it's going to come through, it's going to be checking to the state to compare it to, and it's going to see that it's you know not equal to open not equal to close so it just does nothing and we can actually just copy and paste this line we'll put it right there and then we'll come down to these functions that we're calling in our coroutine so here we are we have open and close now for coroutines you have to return an i enumerator so i'm going to change the return type on both of them right away and another thing you have to do is uh, return something because now we have a return type. So what I'm going to do is right before the state change here and right after the animation, I'm going to call yield. I'm going to return. And what I am going to return is a wait for seconds. And then the length of time I want to wait in here. And we can get this length of time from the animation. So we'll say animation, the animation we want, which in this case is open, and then dot length. So that's going to force the user to wait till the animation is done playing before they, before the state is changed to open, and then they can click it to close it. Now I'm actually just going to copy this line again, and I'll come down here and paste it. And just change the animation that we're waiting for, or at least for the length that we want, to the close animation. Now the close animation is a little bit quicker, but that's fine because we'll probably want to change those values later. Ah, if you see the error I got here, it says uh, expression denotes a type whereas a variable value or method group was expressed or is expected. And that's because I just forgot the new keyword here. So I'll also put the new keyword in here. 
and s we'll start it back up. All the errors are gone. When I hit play, we'll come over to the chest. And as you see, well, let me clear the console. As I hover over it and back off, I'm still getting those. And if I press on it, I get up. And I think I'm calling the wrong animation. I'm calling the close animation every time. So yeah, that, that's the problem. We're calling the wrong uh, coroutine. But I'll show you how you can quickly debug that. We'll go back into Unity. I'm going to select the chest. Now you notice I left the state as public so we could watch it. And of course it has you know three different states it can be in. So if we start this back up and we take a look, we'll notice that the state is closed. When we click on it, it goes to in between and then closed. In between, closed. So we're just calling the wrong animation there. So let's go ahead and take a look to see what we do when the state is closed. Uh, we're going to set the state to in between. We've seen that. Then we start the coroutine close. That's not what we wanted to do. We wanted to actually call open. And likewise up here when it's open, we want to switch the state to in between, but then we want to start the coroutine close. So that should be it to fix that part. So we'll start it back up. And we'll notice that the state starts off closed. And when I click on it, it goes in between, open. In between, close. And no matter how much they click on it while it's going through, it only registers when the state is not in between. Okay. Let's head back into Mono Develop and let's start setting it up to add some sound effects. So I'm going to come up here to where we're listing our variables and I'm going to make two more public ones. I'll put them right above here. So I'm just going to say public audio clip. And I'm just going to call it open sound. And we'll make another one. And I'm going to call it close sound. And I'll just save that off. We'll go back into Unity. This should be exposed in our inspector now. Uh, this should pop up. There we go. And I've got a couple sounds that I have down here. Uh, I've got like six different open close sounds. Uh, I'm going to pick, oh, I don't know. Let's say Creek 1 for the first one. So I'll select my object. Drag it on. Then, I don't know, I'll just do Creek too short for the close sound and if you actually want to preview these before you uh, add them that you have a little play button over here so you can actually hear them you can loop them but let's just go ahead and hook those up so we have our sounds assigned I'm gonna come down here uh, right before the yield and I'm gonna play that sound so I'm going to say audio.play. One shot. And the file I want to play, which has to be an audio clip. And I called it, I forget already. Open sound. And like, whoops, I didn't mean to cut it out. I meant to copy it. And then I'm just going to come down here before the yield. Paste it as well, except now we're going to be playing the close sound. So we'll save that off and if you look at the chest and we hit play, when we go to open the chest, you'll notice you get the error but a missing component. There's no audio source. So we're going to highlight the chest in a hierarchy. Make sure you have your game stopped. Come up to component, go to audio and add an audio source. Now there's a lot of different things you can play around with in the audio. Uh, to be honest, I haven't got around to playing around with all of them yet. Uh, maybe a little later on we can do a tutorial, but I haven't really played a lot, played around a lot with them. So I'm just going to stick to the basic audio source. Now, if we only had one sound that we actually wanted to play, we could actually take that sound and drag it on, or we could click the little button over here and just search through. 
Let me bring that up. All of our different audio sounds that I have. But we're assigning them through script. We have two of them. And I'd rather leave them just like that for now. Now, if we did have one assigned up through the audio clip parameter right here, we'd want to make sure that we turn off play on awake or else when the object is first created, that sound is going to be made. Now, there might be a sound you want to go off when the object is first put into the world, maybe some sort of magic poof or something like that for when the chest appears, in which case, you know, you can put it here or you can just script it in. Uh, I prefer to script it. Now, we have different settings down here for everything. Uh, you can mute it. You can loop it. We don't want it to loop. Uh, we have 3D sound effects and also 2D. I'm just going to leave everything the way it is right now. And let's just hit play. So we'll go over to our chest. We click on it and we get the open. Click it and we get the close. Now, obviously not the best choice of sound effects. Uh, I should really boot up Audacity and create a bit better ones, but it should be enough to demonstrate the point. And as you can see, you can't massively open and close it all at the same time. It does wait. And one thing to notice is that if you click somewhere else on the screen and then drag your mouse over to the chest and let go, it doesn't work. But if you click on the chest and drag your mouse off somewhere and let go, it does work. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. We're just over 10 minutes. Uh, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.